going on, everybody? Welcome to The Rewind, the show here at Smacked Raw, where we take the latest ongoings in professional wrestling between the news, events, what's happening, and we kind of give it a little bit of a rundown for you guys. So we are your host. My name is Kyle Tyson. Uh, back on the show, of course, is the AJ Styles of Podcast and Sebastian, and then you all know him, Mr. Mute Uh RN, Mr. 8984, my good buddy, my co-host. How you guys doing? What's up, everybody? Doing good, doing good, bro. Uh, first show with Seb. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, there yeah, it man. is. I, I, I was here a few days ago. Well, that's first re- rewind. I, uh, first, see, I, I know what I'm talking about, man. First rewind. Got, even though, oh, even though technically show. that was... Yeah, Technically, one, that was a rewind, one, too. <laughs> I made it a rewind because I was too lazy to just come up with, like, a one-off. That <laughs> That's a what I'm It's just a rewind. <laughs> it's a Battle of the Belts special edition rewind is what it was, man. There I found my go. water. This is what I was looking for while you guys, uh, while we were doing the intro. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I need one of those fucking giant jugs. I can't ever find one. You guys, listen, if you're unfamiliar with the show, uh, man, we do this every Sunday um, live on twitch.tv slash smacked raw uh head on over there uh give us a follow big thanks to octane 726 following us just before uh the official recording started you guys can get involved in the live chat it's a ton of fun uh supersonic hangs out here bama dave is always chiming in he's other he's also another cast member of smacked raw but he also likes to hop in the live chats um if you never if you know if you if you can't join us live you know what that's okay too it's okay too you can see all these videos over on youtube.com slash smacked raw podcast hit that like subscribe notification bell, all that youtube stuff you know leave some comments um yeah we'll greatly appreciate it and then if you like to listen to the audio version like a normal human being we're pretty much everywhere at this point uh throw throw a dart at a dartboard with all of those podcasts platforms and apps i promise you we're on it um you guys you guys what a week of wrestling that we absolutely had. what a, it's been a great week. week man we had we had uh aew's first episode on on uh tbs that uh, messed me up i was looking for aw forever and i totally fucking forgot they moved to tbs <laughs> i the same shit happened to me when smackdown went to fox i was still on usa for weeks um yeah we had that we had hard to kill impacts pay-per-view which uh me and seb have to catch up on but all like all over twitter and social media i just see people singing its praises so i'm excited uh you watched that rn how was it man it was fucking fire i mean i i feel like a lot of the hype they got was because of what what that the announcement this weekend which i'm sure we'll get into like but it was a damn good pay-per-view i mean and then i mean i it's a fucking crime if Jonathan Gresham isn't on national TV by, by before 2022 is over. Like it is like WWE and AEW would have failed us if one of them don't fucking sign Jonathan Gresham. Don't put him on dark. You call for don't a bidding war? Is that what you're yeah, doing? You call yeah, for a bidding don't, war? Don't, don't sign him and put him on fucking darker elevation with the rest of the black people. Like he needs to be on fucking dynamite <laughs> every Wednesday. And same thing of Raw. Take him straight to fucking SmackDown or or, or Raw. No NXT bullshit, nothing. No like, 2.0. Get this, get this fucking man on TV. Like, I don't understand, like, what the issue is. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, we also we had the Battle of the Belts event uh, that that uh, uh, AEW put on, which was weird because uh, over on, on Dynamite, the they they had three title matches. The same week that they had a special event <clears throat> themed for how many title matches it has. Um, AEW, I've always said this. You're my favorite show. You got to keep it simple, man. You guys got to stop overthinking things like this, man. If you're going to. Yeah. You know, don't step on your own feet here. If you're going to have a Enough show of- highlighted for all these title matches. <coughs> Give it some space. <laughs> and my thing is too, like especially with that being the finals for the host title and everything, that should that should have been what the show was based around. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and your crowning of your brand new star or whatever. Like, that's what the show should have been about. The rest of the shit was, like you said, didn't make any sense. And maybe Phoenix wouldn't have fucking lost half his arm either if you had just waited Good God, and put it yeah. on and left it for Saturday for. Well, wasn't you know, the show was about? Belt. Wasn't that announced like months back though? It was, yeah, yeah. It was. It, maybe they didn't have the TBS. They said, and they still had to have a 
It's a no, but that, the TBS title isn't the problem. It's the other two titles. That no, they had no, no, the TBS, I, the first episode on TBS. Yeah, so they had to have a big. Maybe that date wasn't set in stone yet right. at the time. Possibly, I could see that. You know, like because I mean, you had to make a, a grand gesture going over to a new network, which they broke a million yeah. again, by the way. Yeah. Um, being on. TBS. Which, I mean, they always do that when it comes to like when they switch channels or if they have something going on, like. They're good at that, like uh, pumping it up to get over a million. It's, it's just fucking staying there. Let's let's, yeah, let's maybe it. maybe just a string of bad luck with dates. That's what I'll chalk it up to. I, yeah, yeah, that's from them overthinking it. Like like you said, like it was it's like it was unnecessary. Yeah, I will I will say this. I'm gonna kick it off right away with um with actually that episode of TBS. Uh, it actually featured my match of the week. Uh, the title match between Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson and uh, and um, Hangman Page, we finally got a definitive winner. Um, it was uh, it, it wasn't it was not your technical like masterclass. This was just two guys that wanted to headbutt each other for thirty seven minutes. Um, God dang Which, it! Was, I, it was I loved it, man. I loved it. I loved it, but that part, like especially with all the shit he's been through, and then with Shibata coming back and everything, like I felt like that was. That part was a little overkill, but it was it was it would have been my match of the week if it wasn't for Gresham being on uh, Hard to Kill. Yeah, see that's that's my caveat. I I didn't get to watch Hard to Kill yet. Um, you know what's oh, funny match- though is is that match uh, the, a close runner up that I almost gave match of the week to, um, which we're going to talk about because it it actually has a cool uh, precedent was the interim title match between uh, uh, Dustin Rhodes and Sammy Guevara. That one, that was paced really well, and it was a lot of fun. Granted, there's some controversy tied into it that, you know, once we get around to it, we'll talk about some more. But as right. a, as a, it was it was a fun watch, that's for sure. Um, Hangman and Daniel was my match of the week as well. Hangman and Daniel was your match of the week? Yeah. Yeah, I like that it wasn't the technical shit. Honestly, like I felt like it was the best so far that they've had. Like, don't get me wrong, the first one was fucking dope, but like, this wasn't what I expected in any way, shape, or form. And I was pleasantly surprised about how violent, how non Daniel Bryan of a match, or really Hangman for that matter, either. Like, yeah, how it wasn't any type of match that either one of them have ever really done. I I agree. I think it was better in the first one. Uh, the first one for me, it wasn't really. It was hour or tie. It's just. When you get 50 minutes in a match and there's just this big, quick burst of energy, for me, that's kind of as far as storytelling. That hurts it. Yeah. Uh, but it was kind of needed to tell a story that they told in the second match. Right. Yeah. Now I knew the, as soon as they brought the judges in that it was what that that yeah. wasn't going to be a fucking. They fact. tried to get you to believe it though. They wanted you to believe. Yeah, they we wanted were going I mean, to another draw. I knew it wasn't like that. That was the biggest reason why I knew it wasn't was because they brought the fucking judges and stuff in. <laughs> oh yeah, they did this before too with the judges, right? Yeah, this like, was actually. Yeah, yeah. I want to say this is um second or third time, ain't it? Second, I'm pretty sure. I, I think I it's heard... the second time that they've had. Wasn't it Jericho and somebody? Yes, it was Jericho. Was it Jericho yeah. and Mox? Uh, I want to say yes. I could be wrong. I don't know. Hey, chat, why don't you help us out really quick? Can you find the other match that had judges in AEW uh, prior to the Daniel Bryan or Bryan Danielson, damn it, and uh, and Hangman Page match? Yeah, it's yeah. the second time, I'm pretty sure. I know it's the second time, too. I know I'm right there with you, man. I, I know it's the second time. Uh, some other minor uh, um, matches that get kind of overlooked because, you know, we shoot once a week and the furthest show from our – recording is monday night raw raw had a awesome main event uh four way uh fatal four way kevin owens seth rollins uh big e and um bobby lashley for the uh number one contender spot uh for the royal rumble to face off against brock lesnar um do you get those big men in a fatal four way it's it's a blast watching that. Yeah. Um, and then not to mention probably the happiest accident to come out of this whole fiasco at day one where Brock came in and won the title that he wasn't expected to. Um, we're getting Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar finally. Something that it just... was it 15 years in the fucking making? Jesus Christ, we're going to get this match. Oh, my God. Yeah. You never thought you were going to get it. No. Yeah, Let's for be a while, honest. But, yeah. 
And out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere, no buildup, no like just sudden, like no like little hints teased, seemingly overnight, we go from we'll never see this match to it's now booked just a couple short weeks away. I, we, the one thing we got to start doing is, first of all, Raw is becoming a good fucking show and out borderline must-see TV the last three or four weeks for sure. Yeah. And the Nick Khan era, as much shit as we talked and as much people's uh, – he's literally fucking cut and erased. He's been, he's been making them give us shit that the fans want. Let's just call a spade a fucking spade. <laughs> like, we've been getting stuff we want. It might be yeah. little yeah. things here and there trickled in, but – since he's been officially like taken over and this is the direction he wants to go, have we not got all the shit? Biggie is champ. Biggie is fucking uh, money in the bank. Money winner. in the bank winner. That was that was huge. You, you know what I'm saying? Fucking getting Brock and Brock and uh and uh, lastly, after literally 15 years of them going back and forth and dodging each other on shows and shit. So it's like we Roman we Reigns is a heel. Roman Reigns is a heel. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Like all these things that we thought would never happen are now. Suddenly, uh, WWE acknowledging another fucking uh, promotion on their program. Oh, I can't Nick, talk about that. Yeah, like I'm saying, like Nick Khan is slow. We might, I know it sucks because what what we got through, but like in the end, like looking back, we might look back and see like this might have been the start of like maybe a new golden era of the WWE as far as modern wrestling goes. After, take. yeah, it's I going, mean, it's, it's going on right, right? Like I said, I mean, look at look at look at the results. Like I said, besides them, literally gutting their entire fucking roster yeah. i mean that's a huge it's, thing to get past with but. every yeah with every nice thing that they do man they just <laughs> they just do another thing that's like why i want to like you but you are one of the most vile people like as an entity and maybe this is that's their way of like like hey i know i did this but i'm a piece of shit here's some flowers is. <laughs> it's like the fucking sour patch kid shit. You know what Damn, it's hard to say right now. We just don't know what the long term thing is with yeah, a new long term thing is to sell themselves to Disney. Well, not just that. They got a new development system, pretty much, and two point yeah, yeah. So maybe they don't want a bench as big as they did, and people just sitting around care. I well, think that he has a long term plan. Like just from yeah, I do too. The reports that I've seen about him and like how he approaches things and everything like this, like well, the way for the most part, no good. Uh, I was gonna say the 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 way I heard it was Freddie Prince Jr., uh, former producer, former ni- '90s male heartthrob, um, went on record and said that WWE tried to sell itself back to Fox, sell itself to Fox several years ago, and Fox and they asked for yeah, too much money. Said no, they didn't know how to sell yeah. themselves, and that was what brought Nick Khan in was Nick Khan knew how to brand themselves. All of a sudden they're 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 now content creators. You know, they, right. they learned how to to label themselves, speak a certain way, to make themselves appealing for more networks, you know, and to make them right. appealing to sell. So that's what he said. He said they said no, but they ended up leasing SmackDown. Yeah, for the instead fucking or whatever, billion for dollars. Fun. Yeah, literally yeah. a billion dollars. So I mean, that's the thing too. I, I saw the number the other day. Not only is he kind of giving some stuff they want as a business, I think the number was he's made them eight billion dollars. Yeah. I yeah, mean they're the most profitable they've ever been in history. Yeah. yeah. I mean so good for us, uh ever in the cuts and good for them for making money, I guess. Yeah. That's what I said. Like if you really like I know, like I said, it's hard to get past the cuts because there's been so many people that we love and care about and that it's just been so many fucking people in general. And but, honestly, like, a lot of the cuts they wasn't doing much to begin with it probably helped exactly. them long term too so i mean maybe it's just best for everybody well they you knew it wasn't sustainable the closet out. yeah when they were scooping up everybody and anybody yeah. to try and stifle the growth of aw you knew the bubble had to pop yeah. at some point aw right. is going through that right now you know yeah, I mean, their kinda... bubble has to pop and they're gonna have to <laughs> at some point they're gonna have to let go a, a solid handful of people I'm really interested to see how that plays out. If they do it in the same manner WWE did, or if they're going to start letting people like trickle out. Uh, and right. not just and not just that we haven't heard the stories of a lot of them. Like there's some that we know for a fact that came out and said they asked for a release. You know, so maybe there's more of them stories and we just don't know about it too. So it's hard yeah, to that's true too. About it. I mean, like FTR wanted out, they let them out. There's been a few of those that came out, and made it public. Maybe some have it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, looking, oh, no, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to acknowledge what we asked 
the chat about the uh, the judges. It was uh, um, it was uh, Jericho and Cody at Full Gear 2019. Oh, Cody. Okay, I knew it was yeah. Jericho. I just can't remember who else was, who else was in it. Okay. Yeah. I didn't mean to derail that conversation, by the way. Oh, I, just, no, you're, I you're didn't right. want it to. It's getting buried. They're they're actually pretty active in the chat tonight. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I didn't want it to get too buried. No, uh, I was I was done with the like Tony Storm. You know, she just quit, and I was like, all right, go ahead. You know, right? Yeah. Oh, Not man. much you can He's, do when you buy your own plane ticket and go overseas. But yeah. Fuck, you really drop a twenty hour flight. <laughs> jump on your yeah, plane. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, speaking of the people that are getting released, uh, I believe it's within the last week. We NXT gutted out um, the black and golds uh, behind the scenes staff. The biggest names that we saw was, uh, of course, um, Brian Adams, Road Dog, uh, William Regal, which is yeah, just crazy to me. And then, of course, the mo- probably the biggest and the the worst feeling of them is Samoa Joe has been fired by WWE twice within uh, the same I- year. I think Road Dog is the biggest one to me. Yeah. Really? Well, because he's been those he's probably the longest tenured backstage person at NXT and over there, and probably Hunter's closest confidant before they brought uh, Shawn Michaels in. So, like, to me, that was the nail in the coffin on black and gold for sure. Yeah. To me, it was Regal, though. Regal, I mean, even if you don't want him as a GM as NXT, to get rid of, of that wrestling mind. Right. Yeah. Mockers, like there's nothing you can do with William Regal. Regal holds. Uh, um, I've I've gone on record and said this probably multiple times at this point. Uh, Regal uh, has my favorite promo of all time. Like it, it's a promo he cut. It's crazy because it it, on Triple H. Triple H one? about Eugene. Yeah. yeah, that is like the best promo I've ever seen in my life, man. I, I was oh god. The I only reason why I didn't like I wasn't shit. really surprised about it because he's been pretty much their number one talent scout so yeah Octane. they're not scouting that type of person anymore you know what that's i'm saying true. Like, that's true but really i thought because joe took over as a talent scout too i figured I maybe know. he was next in line if they got really regal but that got that stays. brian armstrong think, excuse me spuddy spuddy's in here corrected me um no i think all of them were next in line for whoever i think triple h had a clear line of succession for who he wanted to set it up, but being that they're going a different direction, yeah. all those fucking people are gone. Like, well, I think I, I just thought Small Joke kind of fit the Vince mindset in scouting, though, in a way, I guess. I thought like he was there because it the report came out and said he was the under ass one. That's what he wanted to do. Right. Yeah. Well, the only reason why I didn't think that is because they cut him to begin with. And Triple H was like, no fucking hire him back. I'll take it. That's the only reason why I didn't yeah, think. Yeah, Triple S reached you know out saying? to him was what was reported, yeah. Yeah, that's why I was like, that doesn't surprise me. That, that was as a wrestler. Like, I could see him sticking around as a talent scout for Vince is kind of what my picture was. But Speaking of Triple H, Ben, God, isn't he in a in a interesting position? You you got to think. This is – this this as a man – Let's let's take away like WWE. Let's take away like all the labels that are surrounds Triple H as a human being who has over the last several years cultivated and created something. This has to be heartbreaking, and it has and to rehabil- and rehabilitate his his fucking how the fans looked at him because they always looked at him as fucking the wife's the owner's daughter to get ahead in his career. This was like how everyone like kind of came to terms with no, he really is a great wrestling mind and really is a smart person and really is great for fucking wrestling. And regardless if he bagged Stephanie or not, he still would have been a legend and a, a integral part of WWE's history. Yeah. And that that's what it meant to me mainly is people getting to love Triple H like I do. You know what I'm saying? I, it, it's all. Go ahead, Cal. I was just going to say, it has to be like doubly worse that it's your father-in-law that right. destroyed your creation, destroyed your art, to say. Brick you by know? brick. Brick by brick. Like, he you didn't got, even, like... You got to go just, home to your wife and be like, your dad killed, like, my thing. That You know? And, I mean, I know people will argue, well, it's it's still Vince's company. You know what I mean? It's his yeah. right to do that. It doesn't matter, though, man. You You built this thing up and your own fucking dad, <laughs> like... And there's oh. no one left. Like, that's the worst part. Like, there's literally no one left no with Sean. One. 
And that's because Sean is Vince's guy. Like, if Sean wasn't Vince's guy, he'd probably be on one of these cuts, too. But Sean is Vince's guy. We already know that. He said that numerous times. So, like, but literally everyone fucking else that he built NXT with. Like, I never thought I'd see Gabe leave. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I thought he was an ingrained part of developing WWE superstars for WWE. Gone. Like, I, Gabe, like is Matt Bloom still there? They, they get rid of him, too? I haven't seen him on a cut unless it was, like, a while back. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. Like they completely I, I just gutted it. I just wonder because, like Kyle said, it has to be awkward. If you have but, any any type of ego, you'd have to be like, "Fuck this shit, I'm out." Right? Well, I I just wonder because it has to be awkward. And you know, there's been conversations had because they're Matt Bloom's still a home, by the way. Sorry, Seb. I mean, what is Triple H? Because we all know he had major surgery, right? I just wonder what his health is and where he's at, or if he was felt like he was able to keep doing what he was doing. See, that's what nothing, I think. That's nothing's what I was say came to out. Himself. Nothing's came out from Triple H's side of the story. Like we, everybody, and even me, because like it's an awkward situation. I just wonder how much Triple H has kind of influenced it if he's not in the best shape. And that's just, what I was thinking. Maybe his health is worse than what we thought or what's been yeah. let out. Yeah, because yeah, it was he, emergency surgery. I mean, it was just out of nowhere he got bad right, off. Right, right, right. So, so maybe like, he just isn't able to, to uh, run it like he used to. That's what yeah. I was thinking too. Like maybe he's just not able to be that just, at this point in time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's hard for me to see Triple H going home to Stephanie and all this going on, and then the, everything still be okay, like Kyle said. Right. So if you, I, if I just you want have it. any semblance of pride or ego, and I'm, and I'm and not you know saying, he does. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying, saying this you know to be he like, does. Like, like he's yeah. not a no pushover type of motherfucker. Like yeah. you know he's probably it, but that's why I'm thinking that maybe he was. This was a little bit more scarier and a little bit more yeah. worse off than what we thought. And maybe he just isn't medically up to do it right now. Who knows? He may not come back to do anything for the next year or so. So maybe yeah. they had to just kind of they took this as a point to where. Well, he's not going to be there to run it his way anyway, so fuck it. Let's just tear the Band-Aid off and rip it and get, get do what we want to do now and move it in the direction we want, and then he yeah. can run it when he comes back. I, that's In my head, that's what it all is, because I, I think that he's been – they treat it like – you could tell they give a fuck about him and what what he thinks and, like, how he runs things. Like, you can tell that they care about that. So, like, for them to just completely, like, make this – like, almost wipe it off the fucking – they almost Crispin Wad. The black and gold, honestly. Like, there's literally no trace of it left. Like, it's they literally took the last fucking brick and threw it out in the street. You know what I'm saying? Like, for yeah, something like that. this, you know what I'm saying? For it to go this deep, maybe he really was just like, I need a break. I can't do this. My health's worse. I'm like, go ahead and do what you got to do. And, and I'll, too, I'll t- take care of it when I come back. Or I'll look at it when I'm healthy enough to do it. And too, like Kyle said, you know, we all know Triple H is prideful and he, he has an ego. I mean, if he's not in the best shape, they continuously lost to AEW, and this is how this whole thing started. Right. I mean, he's losing his talent to AEW. Maybe he just said, "Throw I'm good towel. at the end of it. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's hard. And you know what? It, all we can do is speculate. You know, yeah, because you do, came out. RN raises a great point. You know, it, you do raise a great point. With with the medical issue, if it is worse than we anticipate, yeah, is a very good – that's a very good thing. You could have everybody behind the scenes like, look, man, you got three daughters. You've been on the road your whole life. Literally. You know, how, about, how about you raise your kids? How about you come home and help raise your kids now? You know, it's, those are possibilities. It's just – on the surface, you know, if the story goes like the man's going to make a recovery in the next couple weeks and he's going to come back like Will Smith and in, in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air meme or like GIF of him showing up in the house and all the furniture's gone. <laughs> you know, at that point, you you kind of just like if that was if that's how that played out, I, you'd think. He'd just and that's the thing, like as shitty as as shitty as Vince is, like, I just don't think he did it. I don't think he would do Triple H like that. Like, I think. And- that- he was a part of this decision. Like, I don't think he may have thought that they would have gutted it. Like you said, <laughs> through the fucking furniture and ripped the fucking yeah. <laughs> carpet yeah. off the floor. God, but. Man. And, Go ahead. I mean, there's reports. If Vince leaves the fucking building, there's reports on it. If he's not out of showers, it's just weird to me that there's no reports on any tension between him and Triple H. Right. And there's no reports on Triple H's medical condition since he had his surgery. 
I that's, haven't heard anything. That's what I'm saying. Like that. That's why I'm like, it's sus- all I'm hush thinking like it's too. It's and and Triple H himself. Like he always gets him and Stephanie yeah. both. Anytime there's anything going on, they they always get out in front of it. Like, hey, we're doing good. Blah blah blah. Like, there's literally been fucking nothing. That's it's what I'm out. thinking. It was worse than what was originally reported. And like you said, it was an emergency surgery on top of that. So yeah. it had to have been fucking bad for him to just fucking need heart surgery <laughs> instantly out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. no it's... signs of sickness or anything. And you know, he's healthy but... working out. The guy's fucking jacked and he's 50 years old. You know what I'm saying? So like. Yeah. The term it's too quiet definitely kind of goes on to this because there's not been a word said about any of it. No. Yeah. Ever since Brody Lee's passing and you know, you remember like, yeah, there wasn't a peep about him for months, yeah. you know, and God, God, you know, hope that it isn't nearly as severe with what's going on with Triple H. But ever since then, now when you hear someone gets ill and then you don't hear nothing for months, because granted, for one, yeah, it's not our business to know. No, you know, yeah. it's no one. No one's there. No one's entitled enough to, to be forced into uh, telling somebody else to disclose, you know, their medical conditions and everything. Right. right. But you, you had Brody obviously he passed and then you know the other big name was keith lee we didn't hear nothing uh keith lee would just you know peep in on twitter every now and then says like look i'll catch you up you know when it's time and then you find out with keith lee it, it was he got covid and it was fucking serious yeah. you know um yeah so after like those high profile ailments it, it does make you nervous now when you when you hear news about somebody getting sick and then they just go dark for several months you know, right. like it's literally like, nothing. you just want that reassurance. Like, Hey, I'm cool. I just decided I'm going to play softball. Like, uh, like Sid, right. you know, <laughs> for a while, I just want to play some softball, man. Get a break from all of this. But, uh, yeah. Um, let's move on to some lighter stuff. <laughs> let's move on to some lighter shit. Uh, let's transition over to our pin tweet. So every now and then, um, what we do on the show is we'll do a pin tweet on the show's Twitter handle and, uh, you can go over there. Uh, usually it's just asking some question and you can give your thoughts on the question. And during the rewind, uh, we'll read some of them off. And then, uh, so for this one, we did the 2022 predictions. Of course, the three of us, along with Kyle from Apron Bump, gave our predictions recently. Um, so we'll hear some of your predictions. We didn't get that many, but let's let's see the ones we got. Supersonic, who I believe is actually in the live chat. Uh, he's got several predictions. It says Asuka wins a WrestleMania match um, this year. Bray and Braun will come back to WWE. I kind of agree with that one. Uh, uh, yeah, I definitely agree with that one. We're going to see some form of AEW releases. I agree with that one. And um, finally, we might see the reboot of Ring of Honor. So hopefully things are great in 2022. I'd love to see all those things. You know? Yeah. AEW needs to get on the wheel and and, you know. Some people, you know, if they ain't doing nothing. Bray and Braun, though, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, they're kind of like... <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I think they're it, it feels like it, right? Especially now, there's been a hundred more cuts since then. I mean, eventually I got to bring them back. They would be big returns, for sure. Yeah. I even I think mean, Braun would, would have some shine. It. Has right. has I'm Absent made the heart go fonder of Braun? No, I still think... I mean, he is the <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest, but no, but like, I've, I mean, especially now, like you said, with their decimating the roster later, like, honestly, they'd be dumb if they didn't bring them both back. I mean, they need them. Which Brown? Like, the monster we got early on or the Choo Choo Brown? Let's get rid of the Choo Choo Brown for one. Choo Choo Brown yeah. should never in his fucking no, no, life no. make I need, I need if bass we, guitar Brown. If we can get back to regular Brown, then you know, I'd want it for Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns off the fucking whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Just, the, just, yeah. the, just Braun the Destroyer. Yeah, who just destroys yeah. stuff. Yes, I'll take that man. Right. He was I hot, was, dude. Um, he was iron hot for a minute now. Right. Yeah. Like when Roman was on the stretcher and he just slung him. Yeah, that was great. Enjoy it. Never give him a mic and never let him do the choo choo train again. Yeah. Like, so, we don't have to flip something every night. We can space it out. Like, right, right. One time he had a grappling hook and he pulled a uh, set down on Brock. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. yeah, man. So he doesn't always it's flip things Hammond up. Guy. He sometimes pull things down. Make him a fucking Paul Heyman guy. Let Paul Heyman be on both shows. That'd be interesting. 
That would be interesting. Uh, Spuddy in the live chat says he's got some predictions. Matt Cardona wins uh, Impact World Title. What y'all think? Yeah or nay? Oh, Impact. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Dan Housen signs like with AEW. Ah, man, I don't see it. I do. Actually, I do see that one. You think so? He, he seems think like he'd be right at home at dark. I don't know about on like. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna end up on Impact probably with because like Decay and Crazy Steve and all like that's kind of right up. Yeah, the alley, yeah. and they've been debuting some ROH guys, which we'll get to. But I could see him on AEW as well because he, he he's just quirky enough where it might work. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, is uh. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I lost my spot. Jericho retires this year. Oh, that's a bold one. Dude, Jericho seems like he never wants to retire. That dude wants to party all the way to his grave. Um, Sammy Guevara turns heel. Yeah, I definitely could see that. New Day breaks up. They're already kind of broken up. Yeah, they don't even use the same music or nothing anymore. No, I'm kind of just like, you know, Xavier and Kofi. They'll team for a minute, and then and then Xavier will do a singles thing. It's King of the Ring. Um, Angel Garcia is uh, released from WWE. Who? He's with Umberto. Yeah. Umberto? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right. Angel, really? Garza. Garza, yeah. He has, uh, he has Garcia. Come on, Spuddy. Oh. Okay. Yes, buddy. And he had the gall to correct me earlier on this. <laughs> um, let's see. Squirrel Circle Countdown. EJ, uh, he says AEW uh, will expand programming to accommodate their huge roster. I don't see that, man. Um, I don't see that. Uh, Bray and Braun right. also, yeah, says they'll go back to WWE. Uh, he actually believes Ring of Honor will not make it back. Um, and the promotion will close its doors for good. In 2022, damn. I, I was thinking that at first, but with Gresham defending the title on other, other promotions and other pay per views and shit, I don't know. I'm kind of, kind of holding out I'm, hope for him. I mean, I am too, but they did say when it closed that that would happen, though. They did say that they would kind of travel until you know. The yeah. Seasons I hope that they might come back though. But it said April, I think 20th or something like that. First yeah, show back, it, maybe. Yeah. Um, Bama in the chat says the Briscoes will invade AEW to blow the tag team wide open. Yeah, that was the one prediction that we missed on our show. That should have been the most obvious one that Briscoes are coming to AEW. Yeah, no, that's, that's why, why I didn't, I didn't pick it. Like I figured that I figured they'd already fucking be there by now. But <laughs> yeah, they put that show out. Honestly, that's why I didn't. They, pick. Then they had a an encounter with FTR like at the last Ring of Honor show. Yeah, they, they did. did. And, yeah, uh, they did. That's right. So FTR hard, confronted them. W. Yeah, and it's I think they did something with GCW too. I can't remember. One, I could, I could be wrong about that, but I know they had something on GCW. They'll be good for the tag division, AEW. So man. it's already teased. So I didn't. That's why I didn't throw that there. I figured. That, right. That tag division is stacked, man. When when um when Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy won the titles, and you saw all the tag teams on the on the on the ramp, I was like, God damn, man! AEW's got some tag teams. When the fuck do we ever see him though? It's weird, right? We see a lot of the the, the eight mans. They'll feature multiple tags. God, right. God bless it. Don't we see a lot of them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bama have, also like, goes on to say, uh, Thunder Rosa will dethrone Britt Baker. I totally think that's happening. If um if Jamie Hader doesn't do it first, right. um, Raquel Gonzalez and Rhea Ripley will be the women's tag team uh, females. Oh, the the female version of the Brothers of Destruction. Man, uh, who the fuck are the women's tag champs? I forgot. I totally forgot about those. That's uh, Selena Vega and Carmella. Oh, so that's why. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's how little WWE gives a shit about their women's tag team titles. No or offense to Selena Vega and Carmella. I'm just saying, like, they were shoehorned because, like, I out of nowhere together, and they're like, you know what? Yeah, you guys are both bad guys. Let's make you champs. Nikki Ash needs to go on this humiliation tour for the next three to 12 months i told y'all so yeah. uh, one on's a queen so yeah that's true man you can't mess with you know, she's royalty nikki uh, ash i told y'all was ass and was not gonna be no fucking toy explosion and all that tc all y'all motherfuckers i told y'all that shit was garbage but wait and see how they play it out yeah, all right, Bama. How much longer we got to wait <laughs> Sorry, <to see>? Bama. <laughs> uh, Jim A. Bebe, 
Um, Cody Rhodes, AEW champion. Ooh. Oh, man. You ever want to see Cody get hated? Goes back oh. on that never challenging for the world title thing. Um, I think he should do it. Yeah, I mean, dude, he'll be the most hated per. I mean, he's practically is like the most hated person in AEW right now. He can't stand it. That's the worst part. Like, he does not want that at all. And he's like, what the fuck do I got to do? <laughs> it's got to be no bigger soul-crushing thing to, like, actively try to get people like you. And then it just – you get Backfires at every turn. Backfires. I just want love. Man. I mean, I love Cody Rhodes as the, as the person. But as whatever character he's spinning up, I fucking hate. When you can't use your interracial baby to gain you like any type of love or fucking adulation from the fans, it's fucking over, bro. Give it, uh, just just let it go. He did recently (laughs) come out and says that he essentially regrets how that whole Anthony Agogo feud turned out. He has he has come out and said that it was. um, uh, a That's little uh, tone deaf. <laughs> like, Racially, really, Cody? <laughs> as tone deaf as it fucking gets. Like, and that's the thing. Just lean into it and be the heel. Like, what don't people understand? When you lean into it and actually be the heel, eventually they flip and start loving you. So, like, there's there's nothing he can do now except for be an actual heel. There's just, they're just, and that's why he has to win, go after the world title, all that. He has to get all that nuclear fucking heat. For it to burn out, burn down the forest and let the new brush grow. Like, that's the only thing he can fucking do. <laughs> um, first time chat, Polar Knight says, as a barber, I love this podcast. It has every stage of beard growth. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Polar Knight, well, I'm glad you like us. Thank you for hopping in the chat. Uh, appreciate you. Yeah, we would always appreciate. Hit that follow button. Got to give the people what they want. You hit yeah, that fall. Cover my face. Cover my face. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it does. It, it, well, no, no, no. I moved it. I moved it. It's oh, okay. okay. It doesn't oh. cover your face. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Bebe goes on to say, Xavier Woods uh, wins Intercontinental Championship. I, I really want to see yeah. him get his hands on gold to yeah. go with that crown. I really would love to see that. Well, I want to fuck that crown. That shit is so fucking lame, bro. Let it go. Like, like yeah. it doesn't do it doesn't do anybody any good. I I still like him as the king. All right, <laughs> you know, I still like yeah, him. I, no, don't get me wrong. I'm for it, and I love it because he's getting his shine and he's getting to be out front. But I mean, like, I'd much rather be him having a belt, like you said, or some goal, not a, that giant ass stupid fucking crown that doesn't mean anything. Like it doesn't have any real weight to anything you're doing. Like. It's funny, yeah, but it does look like, really goofy too, like overly exaggerated, cartoony. It looks like a crown. balloon, like you know those like thirty balloons or whatever. When you get when you turn thirty, they get you to. It looks like one of those, and they just fucking like put it on his head. Like it, it looks, it looks like a like an evolved version of the Burger King crown. Literally, yeah. It's like if 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 Burger King wanted to actually sell crowns instead of instead of giving away paper ones, they'd probably Boom. sell that. That's the one. Uh, Young Buck split. No, no, that ain't happening. Stop. God, no. Come on. BC Hunter. Oh, man, this guy is this guy's actually one of our active viewers over on YouTube, man. He's always showing us some love. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's wrestling with the Truth Podcast is what he's a part of. You'll see AEW releases. Uh, yep. But he goes on to say that no one will complain um, because, oh, he throws some shade at Tony Khan because they'll say it's because people can't wrestle well. Yeah, that's oof. Low hanging fruit, BC. Uh, Bray becomes the bigger, the biggest horror villain in Hollywood. That's interesting. Um, do you think Bray? Can't we get like some campy horror movie with Bray? If you could do I'm it with Kane, they haven't done it. Like, they did it with Kane, and that was right. arguably something. Now, now I'm surprised that that wasn't one of the things they didn't take advantage of. Like you had an actual legitimate horror character that was fucking over, like. I'm surprised they didn't at least take the steps to do something with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, did you ever watch See No Evil? Yeah, you good. did watch it. I never. I didn't see the sequel. Hell no! I didn't. I don't watch any sequels of horror movies. They're normally the ass as ass can be. Yeah, I saw. I remember even as like a teenager, I was like, "This is something." <laughs> like, I hate all horror movies. Anyway, I look at them as comedies, so I always go in ready to laugh. And yeah, it was. It was definitely funny. Uh, he also goes on to say Braun, EC3, and the narrative invade AEW and the fans clamor for Braun versus Danielson. 
Meltzer gives it five stars. A lot of sass from BC in his <laughs> post. <laughs> I actually like the premise of that faction. Yes. But just the people that they fucking have in it makes no fucking sense because none of them had a narrative to control or like there wasn't like any of them got fired or like had shit talked about them. They just they all just got fucking cut. Like there's no controversy or narrative to control with the people that's in that fucking group. The things I like about it the most was actually just like the 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 promo videos that EC3 right, would right. make. Those were intense yeah. and like dramatic. I loved those. But yeah, as the actual like faction itself, I haven't I haven't never really who, gotten who was into it. it. Bron, EC3, who was it? Who was the other guy? He says, well, and the narrative. I don't know who the other one. It was two. It was two other guys with him. One, one of the guys funny. from one of the guys that used to roll with Jackson Riker. Uh, not that's not, all, yeah, that's what I thought. It was uh, not Buddy, but the dude that was with Buddy. Yeah, God damn, why can't I Mark, think of his name? Huh? Uh, I had it, but lost it. You had it, but you lost it. Yeah, but anyways, yeah, that guy. Right. Yeah. And it was another guy too, but I could I couldn't I didn't recognize who the other guy was. What was what was their stable's name? The forgotten no. Forgotten Sons. Yeah, 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 Forgotten yeah. Sons. Okay. It was because this is gonna kill me. Um, what Blake? It's not Blake. No, because that's Wesley yeah, Blake. Uh, God it damn it! Wesley We're Blake. gonna kick ourselves the moment we see it. Um, Steve Cutler. God damn it! Yeah, Steve Cutler looks completely different, by the way, too. Yeah. And the guest member was actually Lacey Evans. So I forgot all about that. Uh, anyways, um, going back, Hillbilly Heel says, uh, a more, a, yeah, AW talent's gone. Braun goes back. CM Punk versus Colt Cabana. I'd love to see that match in Chicago. Um, but right now they're both faces. You can't do it. CM Punk has to be heel so you can bring in. And don't the they still have real, don't they still have real heat still? It wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't I think they me. do. CM Punk. I don't, if, like, I don't know if it'll ever happen. Yeah. I can't remember the exact ongoings, but essentially from what I gather, because of their podcast, they got brought to court for defamina- uh, defamation, defamation, excuse me, of WWE. Um, and CM Punk agreed to help Colt Cabana with the legal fees. They During the did. whole trial, their friendship fell apart. And then right. uh, CM Punk did not help him with the legal fees. If that, if that's, I think that's how it played out. Yeah, that's no, that's, that's it. That's what I'm saying. That's why I thought they had... <laughs> Good God! He, did he even, did he even, that's what I'm saying. Of all the Dark Order fucking members, he never had any interactions with him. Yeah. Um, FTR, two-time AW Tag Champs. Yeah, I could see that too. Yeah, cool. So thank you guys. Thank you guys. That was the pin tweet, man, for interacting with us. It's always fun. Uh, if you're in the live chat or uh, on YouTube, drop a suggestion what we should put up on the Twitter afterwards too. Yeah. That's, that's honestly, I just kind of go by whatever you guys suggest. Sorry about the dog barking there. Oh, I thought it was our ends. No, nah, I put mine up, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, let's talk about AEW and Impact, or no, no, excuse me, WWE and Impact, the Forbidden Door. Um, dude, what are we getting out of this? I don't think we're gonna get much. I mean, but like I said in our group chat, like just the fact that they're acknowledging another promotion and letting a ch- another promotion's champion on their show. Like, I feel like that's big, even if nothing really comes of it. But that that's still something big that WWE has never fucking really done or let happen. So, yeah, I agree. I don't think we're going to get a lot, but I mean, I didn't think we'll get this. So, right. Yeah. Uh, How do you. So I'm kind of torn because um, you, you can make an argument for either side. You are and you and I agree that we, we prefer yeah. surprises, I think, you know, yeah, Mickey James being announced for the Royal Rumble absolutely should have been a surprise in my opinion. Yeah. I, I know you're trying to get some hype, like as, assuming you're trying to help get viewers to impact. Uh, I think that was some of it. I mean, but that's like, see, that's like the argument I heard was, well, well they I'm... wanted to get, they wanted to get Mickey James name out there so they could talk about impact. And then that will get, you know, people to watch impact. They're trying to do impact a favor or... by spoiling yeah. the review. And they had a big pay-per-view. I mean, coming up, I just that's what I'm saying. Didn't they, didn't they like let it go like during SmackDown and shit on, on right on, on SmackDown? That's what I thought. They yeah. were just here's here's over half of the entrance, you know, and in, in, right. included other people too, like the 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 Bella Twins, Michelle McCool, Summer Rae, oh, yeah. Lita, and um and uh, 
yeah, Mickey James. Well, it's the same and, old bitches and, they have in there every year. That's why I'm like that. I mean, I think that's what it. That's what it pretty much amounted to was like they always have the, those same legend women in it every year. Well, I feel like it. I agree, but at the same time, when they announced that they made it a point to say Impact Knockout Champion Mickey James. Yeah, and a lot of people. Started, you got yeah. you thought that she was going to drop the title last night. Yeah. I mean, they yeah, didn't have to do that. To, they could just announce Mickey James. So if she day. comes out to the Royal Rumble, do you think she comes out with the belt? I think she has to. The fact that they said Impact World. Women's Champion. Yeah. yeah. You have to, man. That has to be part of the deal. You got I, We got to get some impact on WWE. Like, something. Yeah. Um, Bama says, breaking news. Apparently, Charlie Haas has joined Impact on a taping. And he, he goes on to say, hey, Shelton Benjamin, walk through the forbidden door. Um. Yeah, I mean, so right away, you know, you you think of dream matches, right? right. AJ Styles going back. Re, That's re- not the first name that came to mind. Yeah, a, mine too. AJ Styles having a match on Impact Television. Um, you got Chris Saban over there. You could do it with. Um, and fuck all them old guys, bro. I'm tired of this old guy shit. Like, I don't even really necessarily want to see. AJ, I mean, I know that's the first thing that everyone comes to, but like that Impact has so many much better guys to put forth than fucking Chris Saban. I, I love Chris Saban. I love that he's that's what you think of when you think of Impact. But fuck Chris Saban. There's Josh Alexander. There's yeah. uh, Chris Bay. There's there's literally so many more people that sh- should get a shot. Sh- hell, even fucking Moose. Like I'd love to see Moose versus Lashley. You I'd know like what I'm saying? See, like, uh... I like to see Chris Bay and um, AJ oh. Styles, man. That's the, that's I'd love the adjunct, and they're both uh, Bullet Club, right? Know? Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, but he, like I said, like even Maybe. if you, even if you, really any of those guys versus AJ, Moose but, versus like, I, Lashley. Yeah, I, I, AJ would be like my last fucking choice for real. Like I said, well, yeah, because like, not not necessarily my last choice, like, but I wouldn't like I wouldn't go in thinking AJ. Like, I'd much rather see them interact. With other people because I feel like AJ is the clear fucking choice of what everybody's going to be expecting. Yeah. Like, and, like, I, and I hate that. Now. You know WWE doesn't know how to do any surprise or anything cool, so you know AJ is going to be... If it, if anything becomes up and more than that, you know AJ is going to be who they use. I was just saying, like, I would much prefer if it was somebody else. Uh, Bama goes on to say, Josh Alexander versus Sheamus or Drew. Yes. Yes. Fucking yes. Yeah, dude. Most cut out Roman. Yeah, Moose calling out Roman feels like the just – that feels kind of desperate. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I, know. I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm yeah. just Moose, throwing I mean, out Moose I don't think been, it's desperate Moose at all. calling out Roman for a minute now, too. I don't think it's desperate at all. I think that's what you need to fucking do. Like, especially if now the door is open, kick that bitch open. Like, do what you got. Like, get, get impact out there where people – can see it and really understand. Cause like to me, like I like a lot of impact, a lot of stuff on impact more than I like some of the shit on AEW. Honestly, like that's mm-hmm. just me though. But like, I'm not saying impact is better than AEW. A- a- I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that there's certain things about impact. I like better than the shit that's going on at AEW. You think any of the impact male roster will make it into the, the men's rumble? Hell no. No. I mean, well, if the roster cuts, is it really that impossible, though? But, Man. Like, I spice it up somehow. Like, yeah. I'm not sure. I doubt and, it, man. I and who, and who from NXT could you bring up, like, that would usually have a reaction? Right now, they're all developmental. I mean, uh, like Waller. Going. Grayson Waller, yeah. you know. Jesus, he he right. seems to get... I mean, other than Brown Breaker, are they anybody that would get a reaction right now out of NXT? Uh, I don't think anybody from NXT 2.0 would get a reaction, honestly. I think Brown would. I mean, a lot of people's paying attention to him. Yeah, I think Brown would. So, I, but I, the Kyle only reason I don't think that is the greater WWE. Not just us, us, us fans that pay attention to everything, but for mm-hmm. the regular run-of-the-mill fucking WWE person, I don't think – a Royal yeah. Rumble crowd is kind of more. Yeah, up. they're I mean, they're going to be a little right. bit more suave. Yeah, the yeah. smart the Royal Rumble is the. I'd say that's a smart pay per view. So yeah. yeah, I guess yeah, you're right. I think Braun, yeah. Braun, Carmelo, or Waller, I think would make a would. 
I, yeah. I, I, I think Braun's a clear cut for the biggest reaction, though. And Walter, that's it. I mean, oh, Walter, right. yeah, yeah. Dude, I don't even really consider him NXT. <laughs> like, I, well, I supposedly think, he is now. Like, he's really going to be a part of it. I'm into that. Of two point oh, yeah. That's crazy. That's all the reports I've seen. Um, Bama goes on to say, you got Gargano, Champa, uh, Braun Grimes. Oh man, I love Grimes, dude. Grimes is my like favorite Grimes. thing about NXT. Um, and LA Knight, yeah, LA Knight's fantastic. Yeah, LA Knight. Um, I guess you can count Gargano. He's not under contract right now, but yeah, I guess. Yeah, in my heart of hearts, I'm not gonna lie. I think this Impact deal is just for Mickey. Yeah, I think it's one hundred percent for Mickey James just to get. Uh, maybe it's it's an apology, like like you know, that's exactly you know, what an I official said. apology. Yep. Um, I mean, Scott Demore pretty much said that. Remember in that article I sent y'all, like he said they wanted it, we wanted it, Mickey wanted it, so we made it happen. Like, yeah. and that's how I think. But even like I say, even in the grand scheme of things, even if it is just Mickey, it's still a fucking big deal because WWE has never done this before. No, like, yeah, people, don't get me wrong. No, I'm saying I know all of us believe that, but like you know how fucking Madden was throwing a wrench and everything, being fucking spoil sports. But like it's still, no, even if it's only Mickey, if she comes out the fucking Royal Rumble with that Impact Women's Title and holds that bitch up on the stage, it's a fucking win for Impact, flat out. Bama says uh, it could be a, a stipulation to, uh, for her to allow herself to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I, like you want to put it's... me in the Hall of Fame? Okay, put me in that Rumble. I think it's already a win for Impact. I mean, yeah, I said, oh, yeah. you could have said, just said your name in a good light. Yeah, you could have said Mickey James. You didn't have to say Impact Knockout Jack. No, um, and I guarantee uh, you that's why she kept the belt too. Even though we were thinking yeah. she was going to drop the belt, that's probably why she kept it because they knew they were working on this fucking deal, and they're like, "We're getting our champion on yeah. the big fucking show." Like, yeah, and you know that's a kind gesture when they say it too because. You hear, especially a lot over on AEW, um, referring to Undisputed Era's past uh, right. uh, in NXT, and they will not name drop NXT. No. You know, they'll they'll say everything except N- NXT, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and yeah. to be honest, there's a company that's going to work with WWE, like, just behind the scenes. It's Impact. I mean, we've seen it through tape libraries, using their footage for mm-hmm. documentary. Well, hell... And- like I half mean, of the fucking main card is former TNA Impact. Well, wrestlers. I just mean like yeah, documentaries that they make. How many of them right. have TNA footage on it? It's All true. of them, especially if it's time. Well, and, and isn't Jeremy Borash still there working like in like the production and all that shit? Like with the the st- whatever it is, like the. I, I want to say yes, but don't hold me to it. I think he's still there. I know he was a big part of the Boneyard match and all that other shit at WrestleMania. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't know. Like I said, it, I'm with Zed, I'm with Zed. Like it's, it's a fucking win. Like WWE doesn't acknowledge anything or anybody any, as far as wrestling goes. If you're a boxer a kickboxer, whatever the fuck you are, they'll show your shit. They'll say UFC, this WBC, this, all that, all of that. They will not acknowledge rest other wrestling promotions. And just the fact they said that is, unequivocally a fucking win for for impact by by any me- stretch of the means uh bam here's my question has this been in the works since mickey first showed up on impact six months ago uh has this idea been a part of the plans uh from day one of her release no no this is this is very much a spur of the moment like hey you know who we could get in this rumble let's get mickey in here they may have had some conversations but listen man wwe i bama i know you i know you like to give them the benefit of the doubt and think that these guys have uh, all these long-term story booking plans planned out no the vast yeah. majority of what you see on television is it comes Within days, you know, for the moment, right then and there, yeah, somebody reach out and see if there's a chance. Yeah, that's it's it's like my argument for um, oh god, like Damian Priest, you know, it's this whole like Bama laid out like four months of booking of Damian Priest battling with this alter ego and it costing him and all this other shit. I'm like, dude, no, they Damian Priest showed up. Someone was like, oh, you know what? You have a cool name. It's kind of like a dark and a light. 
both in the name. Boom, there's your character. Now you're a schizo. You know, right. and we'll figure it out along the way. Um, I do I do kind of agree to that, man, away from December, like March. Like when it's mania season, yeah. they have a Like right now, they got an idea of where they're going, but when it's not, when mania's over, they take a dead period for good four or five months. <laughs> just, just run the rematches. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hell, WrestleMania to Backlash. It, it, that whole thing is about just doing the same thing. It's, yeah. It literally <laughs> said WrestleMania re- rematches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, oh man, what else we got going on, man? We uh, what else we got going on? We we covered oh, hard to kill, hard to kill, hard to dude. Win. So the the one cool anecdote I saw about it. Now I I can't confirm this. You can, RN. They yeah. said this was the most violent, uh, like North American pay per view. Is, oh, yeah. is what I'm... this person said. This person said. Oh, fucking barbed wire, everything. Like it was and it was really just mainly one match. The X division match for the women's for the women's division, which I, I loved it. Like it was fucking dope. Like it was kind of short. Like I didn't think it'd be that quick. But the X just snatching down that giant ass fucking X is the most lamest shit I've ever seen in my entire life for winning a match. And then Tasha Steele, who is by far probably one of the best women on their roster, like she's so believable, so fucking dope on the mic and then she's standing there holding this giant ass fucking ass doing her promo and shit like it looks so stupid like it was just like like come on man like I don't, i've always loved out to match though i didn't the say match. i didn't love the match no the match the match is dope i'm saying afterwards she had a giant fucking oh. x that was big as her fucking body she's like five foot one like 90 something fucking pounds and this fucking x was literally Probably half the length of her fucking body. She's like trying to hold it up during the interview and shit. I, I heard all that. I thought right before you got into that, though, you said it's the stupidest match. I was like, wait, I always no, like that. No, no, like, no. That is <laughs> kind on, of huh? like what is uh, everyone's kind of hailed impact in TNA yeah, for yeah, was no, that X Division. No, was... And that match was dope. Like it was like it had a bunch of high spots, which I wasn't expecting for, especially from a women's match. And some of the contestants they have in it, none of them were really like high flyers like that, but. They had this one chick, Lady Frost. She was fucking flipping off of fucking everything. I mean, it was, it was just a dope match. Like I said, it was just seeing Tasha still cutting her promo afterwards, called saying the, the next champ I'm coming for you, and then having this giant fucking like cross, like yeah. fucking Jesus or some shit. Like it was fucking the most ridiculous thing ever. We have had some pretty lame wrestling. Uh, um, oh God, what what's the word? That's fleeting me. Like, like uh, just objects that people have had. Like AEW, that's probably one of their biggest things you can knock. Dude, they got some corny props. Props, that's the word. Yeah. Their giant poker chip, which, what, by the way, what the fuck happened with that? With with uh, right. that, and then also the literal brass ring, um, which weird. Both won by the same guy, right? Scorpio Sky won both those bullshits, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he grabbed the brass ring and he got that fucking poker chip, and then yeah, the X Division X. You, you know, you say all the crap you want about WWE. Like, a lot of their props are actually kind of iconic now that you think about it. Like, Money in the uh, Bank, by all, all means, should be a stupid fucking prop. It it works. Yeah. Like, it, it well, works. Well, it's practical. It's yeah. fucking practical. <laughs> and it makes sense. It's a briefcase that holds a contract. You know, right. that it makes fucking sense. You got someone in AEW pulling down a brass ring. What the fuck is the brass ring? You know, like... Of course, yeah, we all know what it was. It was a shot at I'm trying WWE. to think. Uh, oh, um, Josh Alexander went against uh, Jonah, the former uh, AKA Thick Boy that I refuse to fucking acknowledge, but that was actually a pretty damn good match. And he's definitely a much better heel than, than a face. Jonah? Yeah, much better heel. Like his, his move sets and everything just is so much more believable as a, as a heel than as a face. You know what I'm saying? Um, what, what else was good? Uh, the world, the world title match, it was a three way. It was all right. Like, I just, I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't see, man. I don't know if it's just how much time he spent as so fucking mid in WWE, but like, I just can't take Matt Cardona seriously as like a man. Oh event. man. His GCW run didn't no, turn your opinion. I, oh man. I, I changed didn't. my opinion on him. I mean, if GCW wasn't such so fucking gimmicky and like he, his role in it was just as gimmicky as what the promotion is, you know what I'm saying? So like that's why like that type of shit, yeah, but like as an actual world champion, like I just can't I can't take him serious. I'm sorry. I just can't. 
And then uh, the violence they were talking about, it was uh, hardcore. So I don't even know what the fuck they call I can't remember what the fuck they called it, but it was essentially a 10-man tag with pretty much their entire mid card. Well, hardcore war. Hardcore war. I, I got war the card was, up in front of me. Yeah. So it was like... Uh, Willie Mack, Rich Swan, Eddie Edwards, yeah. Rhino, Eddie Edwards. and Heath taking right. on Eric Young, Diener, Joe Doring, Doc Gallows, and, and Carl Anderson. Brothers. Well, the... Uh, the Eric Young's group is called Violent by Design. So it was Violent by Design with the Good Brothers or whatever. And, Got you. Uh, Rhino and Heath ended up taking the pin over the Good Brothers. And then the Kingdom, the OG Kingdom, with some uh, with PCO or whatever the fuck his name is. And then uh, one of the guys from the Kingdom that took over, they attacked the winners after they attacked uh, the winners after the match. So Those, those were uh, Ring of Honor wrestlers, right? Yeah, yeah. Showing up on Matt, Impact. I heard, that was, I heard that was really dope. It was Matt Taven, uh, Mike Bennett, P- PCO, whatever the hell his name is. And then, Maria uh, Canales was out there, too. Yeah, and I always forget the other guy's name. But he like Dredge and shit. He looks like Rob Zombie from those fucking movies or whatever. Yeah. But, but yeah, no, they beat the shit out of everybody afterwards. So, that, I mean, that was pretty dope. And then uh, that's... Oh, oh the, the best one. Uh, Chris Saban versus... Uh, Chris Saban versus Jonathan Gresham. It was, it, that was a fucking... Technical yeah. fucking masterpiece. That's so that's where like all the photos, like the like 80% of the impact photos I saw was John Gresham. Yeah. Like, people were really happy with it. He him. wasn't even the main event. I think he was like the maybe the second or third match on the fucking card. And they did it in pure wrestling rules too. So it wasn't just like a normal like match. Like that was the best part about it. They did the pure wrestling rules. Like it was it was fucking fire. I mean, Chris Saban can definitely, definitely still go. And it was cool too because uh Gresham was actually a part of a stable with Chris Saban. Like back in the day when he first got started, him, Jay White, and then the Motor City Machine Guns, whatever, they kind of took him and Jay White under his wing and shit. So that What's was a cool de- callback, too. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. What's the deal with the two world championships? I remember that Moose resurrected what? The like uh, TNA one. TNA. The white TNA one. But it should be gone now. It sh- okay, so it's unified with Impact. Right. Oh, oh in, I see now. It was the Ring of Honor World Championship match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was oh, okay, really okay, okay. I th- I saw two world titles and I thought they still had split up impact. No, no, that. they they. I think when he beat Christian, he fucking unified him into just one. I think that's good. Yeah, that's good. No, I'm definitely going back. Actually, I'm I'm gonna once we're done shooting here tonight. This is actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in my iPad because the football game is. Eh, we're only actually halfway through the game, but I'm yeah. definitely watching this tonight. I can't wait. It was definitely worth it. It was probably it was definitely one of the better. Oh, and Todd Phillips, whatever he's going by his real name now. He was the announcer on there. He took Stryker's place. Yeah, and didn't you say it, that he he did a much better job? It's not. It, I don't want to say he did a much better job because like I don't want to shit on Stryker, but like it just felt different and it felt bigger. For I, I don't know if it's because he's a WWE guy or whatever, and it might just be it. And like WWE's in my head, announcers like, are mostly iconic too. You know what I mean? Right, commentators and announcers usually. Well, yeah, he started out SmackDown shot. when it moved and then NXT and everything like so in my head, like it just felt like it felt like a bigger even even and he evened out too deep D Lo Brown's like super old man corny shit. Like he evened out some of that too, you know what I'm saying? And then like uh yeah, it just felt it just felt like a bigger and they had actual fans too. Like it was only maybe like looked like it was only like 50 fucking people in there, but the fact yeah. that they had fans and then Todd Phillips, who's going by his real name, I forgot what his real name is. Like it just felt like a bigger show. Yeah, I saw um, there's this girl on Twitter who's like a big fan of AEW. I think her name is like Christy or Christine or something. And I saw that during the pay-per-view, I, I want to say, uh, who was it? It wasn't Saban. But there was a spot where the dude uh, jumps over the turnbuckle to the outside like a suicide dive. Oh, it's Trey Miguel. That's what, it was Trey Miguel versus the other dude from Forgotten Son. Yeah, I, I recognize uh the girl from twitter he landed right on this girl who's on twitter like posting all the time <laughs> yeah yeah i i saw that shit man um you know i can't wait man it sounds like a good pay-per-view i i kind of view like impact now is slowly working on me the way that nxt did like i right. wasn't tuning in weekly to nxt but i you always caught their uh their takeovers and i find myself like that with impact now because uh they had what bound for glory was the one before this right Right. Yeah, I watched that shit, and that was fantastic. Like, that was an awesome pay-per-view where uh, Mickey James won the title initially. Yeah. 
Yeah, dope. No, I, mean, I, I love I love Impact. Like it, it's. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of started watching it just like just so I could keep up on things and like I kind of just started watching the pay per views and shit. And then I kind of just kind of fell into it. Like, but I genuinely I probably watch it more than I watch NXT now. If I'm being 100 percent honest. Nice. What do you think about Impact, Seb? Do you ever catch a show? Uh, here and there, kind of yeah. like you. Um, yeah. I I know this show has a lot of hype. I had to work late last night, so I ain't got to watch it yet. But I'm definitely gonna check that out here in the next couple of days. Yeah. Um. Yeah. From one pay per view to another, though, let's talk about the Royal Rumble for a minute. It is looking stacked. I will say that. Um. Yeah. And then we can get into uh uh potential spoilers of what might be taking place. You showed an interesting video that makes complete fucking sense. Complete fucking sense. Yeah. Um, Royal Rumble's looking stacked. You got Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar. Dream match. Dream fucking match. Uh, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. These guys are always magic when they mix it up in the ring. Always. Yeah. You have the the Royal Rumble matches. Um, you know, say what you will about, like, spoiled... Uh, surprises, the Royal Rumble matches are always going to be fun. Those four matches right there are worth the price of admission yeah. alone. Just those Literally. four. But, and you're probably going to have some mates of Becky, Bianca, and Liv. Yeah. Yeah. I hopefully Liv can stay around that title picture. I, I really don't want to see her get tossed aside, but you have to pull the fucking trigger. Like, you have to pull the trigger like two matches ago with Liv. Like, if you're going to do it, fucking do it. I'm sorry. Like, I don't see what everybody else sees. Like, I get the appeal of her, but, like, I don't think her ring works there, and I don't think her mic works there. And the fucking crying, like, I just can't. I I can't. Like, I I want want to, but. I see it. I love Liv, but when you're comparing it to, I mean, the closest thing to a Stone Cold women's division has ever gotten. It's hard to say, yeah, Leo should take the belt off Becky. Thank you. Somebody else finally fucking said it besides me. Everybody looks at me like, Yeah, I mean, no (laughs) shot to Liv. I love Liv, but we've never seen anything like Becky. No. You know, it's it's hard to say, you know. Yeah, and honestly, she's not on Bianca's level. I mean, let's just call a spade a fucking spade. She's not. Like, I just, I don't see what, I don't think, even whenever I was saying they should have did it before, like, I don't see anything about her that's like, that screams world champion or screams this is my time. Like I just don't. Like the, like I I just don't. I'm sorry. Like I don't think she's done anything that puts her over the top over anybody on that card to be the champion. I, I think I, I, I think the appeal that Liv has. Now, granted, I think there's like a greater appeal. I do believe that she has an audience, but I, I'll right, say like right. from my personal standpoint, part of the appeal is watching her grow. Like I remember Carmella was just cringy as fuck to watch wrestle right. for a long time. And then somewhere around that smack that first title run that she had after winning money in the bank, things started clicking for her and I found it fun to watch just as be like, "Yo, I've watched you progress. Like I've watched you evolve right. into a better wrestler." And I think that some people are seeing that in Liv. Like I mean, I woke the fuck up when Liv did that like springboard flipping fucking powerbomb to Becky. I was like, oh shit, you've been you've been practicing. Okay, let's see what you got. And I think it was all right. But I get what I get what you're saying. Like if you say, hey, are you a complete package right now, ready to take the belt off Becky? Like, no, but it's pro wrestling. You can right. have some yeah. type of you could have a fluke win. You could have a short title run. You could do something. You could get those photo shoots with the belt. You could get your name in the record book. You know, I'm I mean, not saying she needs to take Becky's spot. Like, fuck no, yeah. she can't no, take no. her spot. Like, if Carmella was a champ, sure, live over Carmella. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but exactly. Like, live even if over Bianca, Becky right now, I, I just can't. Right. Yeah. Like, even if it was Bianca, like I could take it more seriously. Like you said, if it was some fluke shit and she rolled up Bianca or like hit a, hit that power bomb out of nowhere, like I could take that. Like I feel like that would make more sense. But not. But her beating Becky, like I just I. I I I don't get I, I don't get it I don't see how it makes any sense whatsoever mm-hmm. like it, it's I, I don't know I, I like I said I don't know I'm I'm trying not to be a hater like and, I genuinely like her and I does I like you said I do like that she has gotten way fucking better than those riot squad years she has but and yeah you know, it's kind of sucks because 
not to be defending WWE, but we always say give this person a chance, give this person a chance. And they have with Liv, but for a lot of fans, they don't get a chance unless they actually win the belt. That shouldn't right. be how it is. She's getting TV time with Becky fucking Lynch. Right. I'm a major program. I mean, that's point. But, fan, but fans are just not into it because she hasn't won the belt. That's not, that shouldn't be the parameter, I guess. Right, right. I mean. No, I agree with you. All right, over here getting sleepy. That old man syndrome. You got it coming up, man. I haven't, I haven't signed for Roman and Seth though. This is only be their second one-on-one match, as hard as that is to believe. Really, the yeah. only the only other one is where the Seth hit the pedigree mid spear. Yeah. Yep, and unless you count that gauntlet match Raw had, I think that was both involved. But yeah, well, that's not just... a singles match; it's a gauntlet match. Yeah, nice. well, but they still had a one-on-one segment. But yeah, second match they ever had one-on-one. So yeah. it's so everybody yeah. fresh. You know, and it's gonna be a banger. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> so let's Talk let's dip into the these potential spoilers, right? So, and and to be honest, I have no credible source to 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 to. No, to, I got this off of TikTok. So. Yeah, to quote. You. <laughs> but it makes all the sense in the world. And so the thing is, so the rumor is that we're going to be switching belts. Uh, we're going to be swapping the WWE title. And the Universal title. Um, Universal title is going to head over to... Uh, right. Which one is it? Who has the Universal title right now? That's that's Roman, right? Roman has a yeah, 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 Universal yeah. So, title to Raw. Going WWE back to Raw. title to SmackDown. Yeah, and WWE title going to SmackDown. And the way this will occur is that Seth Rollins, who's on Raw, will have to beat Roman Reigns. He will beat Roman, become champ, take that belt back to Raw... Um, and then we will get that fabled match for Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, which is like the most um, the widely speculated thing that WWE is doing. And that makes sense because what was the other option? The other option is you have Brock lose to Bobby Lashley uh, and then just say, fuck it, I'm just going to go challenge Roman. And they're not going to have Brock lose right before Mania. Whereas with Roman... You've got the Paul Heyman factor. Right. You know, you could get a screwy loss. It's just going to be crazy to see him lose, um, considering he's technically only lost one match since 2019. And then WWE had to reword it as a no contest instead of a disqualification. Um, so, bro, because WWE, because trust me, when, when it comes about, they're going to start talking about it. Roman hasn't lost since fucking 2019. He hasn't lost a singles or any match for that matter. Since yeah. pre-pandemic, um, which is a fucking crazy thing. Of course, though, like I said, uh, 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 that disqualification um, for for attacking somebody. I can't remember it, but he was DQ'd. He was fucking DQ'd, all right? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, no, no. He was getting put out by, uh, oh, who the fuck was it? Because it was like a nobody. Not a nobody. That's mean. Um, it, was, it was Cesaro, I thought, wasn't it? Someone had him, like, in a submission. Uh, who was it, man? It was. Uh, I think it was Cesaro. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, man. Was... Somebody. Yeah, because they they were saying like they had just hit this. No, it was it was Xavier Woods. Oh shit! It was. It, it was, was Xavier was. Woods. Yeah, he hit that elbow drop. It was about to get the pin, and then the Usos jumped Xavier Woods uh, for the DQ win. Um, oh, that's, that's, a... That was that was technically his first loss. But then next week on SmackDown, they called it a um they called it a no contest. So they weren't no fluky thing with Cesaro? I feel like they was. No, man. He got beat. He just got beat. I thought I got DQ'd for like a chair or something. Like, you know, SmackDown match. I don't know. I don't know. I guess not. No, because I just, I remember that that stat being brought up, I think, by like Sean Ross Sapp or somebody when Xavier Woods got DQ'd or Roman got DQ'd. But anyways, yeah, that makes sense. Um, Fucking Seth being the one to beat Roman. What, what do you think would happen? He'd lose twice. You think he'd lose to Seth and then lose to Brock at Mania? No, I think he'd beat Brock at Mania. And just put the belt back on Roman? Yeah. Lose the belt and then just like a month later, win it back? Well, you got to think, Brock ain't going to be there all fucking year. Like, he does That's his true. like four or five months stint, and then he's gone. We're already <laughs> kind of Brock, like spoiled with Brock right now. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's I, I can see that happening. Or really, I can see it happening... Maybe a chamber or something like that too before that, because like 
we don't get a lot of Brock. Like, and and they started it kind of early this year. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, well, don't forget, we still got the Saudi show. That it's, too. Yeah. No, we do. We do have that Saudi show. It looks. Like, I think you're gonna be right, Seb, on that predictions video. I, 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 I'm more. I think about. It, I think we are getting that elimination chamber in Saudi Arabia. I believe we are. Yeah. Um. But yeah, dude, that's crazy to me to think of Roman losing because like a lot of people, I think, collectively share the idea that like Roman's just gonna fucking honestly like I, I hate to say it, but like never lose. <laughs> like, just nobody. But uh, hopefully, uh, my uh, my prediction comes true. Power yeah. couple, let's go. Yeah, Seth, uh, <laughs> Seth and Becky, man, that's oh, this will be insufferable. This will be so yes. insufferable. Man. In the words of Bama, that means they're doing their job. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Um, so from one interesting take to another, AEW is crowned an interim champion. I do not recall ever hearing about an uh, interim championship in pro wrestling before this. Seb, you're our encyclopedia. Yeah. Who's, yeah. who's oh, yeah. been interim there's champ? Been, there's been multiple. Uh um, yeah. I think there's been a uh, interim intercontinental champion in WWE. New Japan does it a lot. Yeah, they New just Japan did. Does. it. Yeah, they just did it like this past year. Yeah, I, I just I've never, never heard of um, it done before. Yeah. Uh, I just quick quick Google search interim WWE champions. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. I think we had the the interim intercontinental champion when Sami Zayn stayed home, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought they stripped him. I think they did after a while, like right. after so many days. Yeah. Uh, Which they've done it, like I oh, remember years ago. I feel like they've done it, not I even just. I think they had the interim the two, cruiserweight. cruiserweight champion yeah, too. the cruiserweight. Yeah. That's the one I remember. Yeah. Yeah, because what was it? It was definitely Devlin. got. Yeah, he got stuck overseas. Yeah. yeah. No, I remember that now. Yeah, that's – okay, so you're right. That's the one that I remember the most. The only article I could find is actually – it's funny. It's it's all in Spanish. <laughs> but, yeah, it just has Sammy pictured, and in, 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 I don't understand anything it says, but it just keeps adding <laughs> to Sammy and, and Devlin. So, okay. So let's, let's speculate here. Let's let the speculation run wild. So Cody Rhodes beats um, uh, – uh, fucking Guevara over at, at uh, uh, the holiday bash Christmas night, right? Wins the title. We get this rematch, um, battle of the belts. Uh, last second, Cody is pulled out for a medical reason. He's not medically cleared to wrestle. We don't have any. Uh, didn't tell, huh? Did Tony not say it was for COVID protocol? Like exposure? Is for it? Sure. Because, yeah, they. I thought they would have mentioned it by name, like, but anyways, yeah, he's not medically cleared. So Sammy and and Dustin Rhodes go at it, which was actually an interesting concept because Dustin Rhodes, um, of course, if he had won, he'd have to have a match with Cody. And right. um, they arguably had the best match AEW's ever done, Cody versus Dusty Rhodes. Um, still, I think, my favorite AEW match to date. Uh, so it was interesting stakes here. They have the match. The match is a fantastic, fun watch. Uh but of course, AW being super lax with the rules, uh, Dustin hits a insane uh, Canadian destroyer on Sammy Guevara yeah. off the apron through a table. Everybody cries for DQ. I cry for DQ. I'm not gonna lie. The table. That's right. that's a DQ right there. Um, however, the match continues. Sammy Guevara ends up winning um, via a lot of pinning exchanges, and uh, he is now your interim champion. What was the point of putting like the belt on Cody? Because you would think he just Sammy was just winning it back, right? Yeah, I don't like it. What was uh, the point in all of I this? Mean, that have, I mean, I get it. <laughs> I get it's battle of the belts, but they should have been something else. Why? I mean, you know, Cody's going to beat Sammy. Cody do you think that? Who do you think the original planned winner was, Cody or Sammy? Cody. Cody, right? Yeah. Cody okay. for sure. And Cody's going to win their match. I mean, I just, why have Sammy lose to him twice? 
Right. Like, and not even, I mean, either way, I guess he lost to him twice if they've had the match. But why give him a title of interim champion just to have him lose another championship if it counts, I guess? And I don't know. I just, I don't like it. It don't make sense to me. No. It's, it's one in cases of AEW just overthinking. In my yeah. Opinion. Sammy, a, uh, I do like that he went straight to the open challenge. And I do like this idea, like this match lineup with. Um, I don't know why his name just fleeted me. It's part of two point Danny Garcia. Right. I do love this matchup. I do. I think those man, I I love the young roster in AEW, but yeah, Which, it's so bad though. I mean, like I said, I thought Tony came out and said Cody was exposed to COVID. Now yeah, if it's a lot if just, it's a long term injury and Sabe is gonna be interim champ for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it building up a little bit. But if it's just a two week switch turn around and it does nothing and that seems to be what it is yeah i'm inside the ropes uh him and brandy are isolating with family who have covid yeah so it yeah. is yeah it's just so, it's a covid thing so they'll probably be fine so unless sammy wins which i don't i doubt it just it does nothing for him yeah you get it's it's odd to see a kid I, I i i honestly didn't know that cody won i didn't watch the a uh, holiday bash on him Christmas Day, but I I knew it was gonna be some bullshit as soon as he came out, shook his head, and called him kid. I'm like, well, he's getting this fucking belt back. <laughs> um, Bama. Uh, also, yeah, another another interim title was the the Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon's ladder match. Was, Maybe that's uh, what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, was the Intercontinental um, interim. Um, Bama believes they put the belt on Cody to get him heat. And they're trying to get Sammy sympathy because of the Tay Conti situation. Mm, I don't think the Tay Conti situation is as big. Uh, I, no, I don't know. As, as, I mean, granted, you're always going to have, like, crazy people on the internet. Uh, what happened with Tay Conti? Um, so Sammy Guevara and Tay Conti. Sammy, you know, famously proposed to his longtime girlfriend, yeah, Pam. And they're done now. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, Sammy Guevara's got a, a, a vlog on YouTube, and Tay Conti's featured regularly on it. And a lot of people were speculating that they were together, and essentially that Sammy was cheating on Pam, and all of that nasty stuff. People getting people getting too far in other people's business. Literally, yeah. And then, lo and behold, in December, they put like Sam Sammy Guevara and and Pam publicly broke up. They said it occurred back in I, – I hate that I know so much about this. Uh, <laughs> they said it happened back in November, and then um, Sammy Guevara and Tay Conti officially announced they were in a relationship on New Year's. I found this all out casually scrolling on fucking Twitter. Not even reading <laughs> feeds. <laughs> ah, damn, the weird things that stick in your brain. Get but, yourself, Sammy. Yeah, so you, got, so you have the crazies online calling Tay Conti like a home wrecker and shit and – Fucking just like I said, people way up in other people's business that have no right to be there. Yeah, but yeah, like I don't know. I don't think it caused that much heat. I don't think it's that big. Yeah, man. Like I said at the end of the day, in a lot of these situations, I I agree with Dave Chappelle. Twitter's not a real place, you nope. know. Um, unless of course it is, <laughs> like uh, Kevin Hart's. Um, yeah, unless it's Kevin Hart. Oh man, that's all I got. Yeah, um, Johnny Knoxville's in the Rumble. What do you guys think? <laughs> I am going to go see the new Jackass movie, though. I'm oh, like, me too. You got him, man. You got to see it. There's usually a little celebrity. It's just yeah, he'll get tossed out by God knows who. He's hopefully. gonna get fucked up. Hopefully, he's it's awesome. Gonna- He'll probably get through it by... Dude, he's, ass, he's gotta be... Mom. I wonder if he's 50 yet. I don't think he's 50 yet. How old do y'all think he is? He's gotta be close, like late 40s for sure. Yeah, I mean, he's he's just all white hair at this point. Like, there's very little color left in any of his hair. He'll probably get gorilla pressed out by Amos. I mean, that's... Yeah, he, he turns... That's the biggest bump he can take. Yeah, he turns right. 50 this year. Fucking <laughs> sake, man. Jesus. He's gonna get fucked up. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh shit. 
Stuff's falling. My Brody Lee poster just fell over. I got my Brody Lee poster in the mail. I actually got to put it in the frame tomorrow. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, God, dude, Johnny Knox, jackass. So he, he eliminates, eliminates, uh, 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 well, he doesn't eliminate. He, he tosses Sammy fucking Zane over the top ropes. Um, Sammy Zane's going to probably beat the piss out of him. I, you know what, you know what he's going to do this. So this is what he's going to do. Realistically, how can you beat the piss out of Johnny Knoxville on television, but not like risk seriously injuring the guy? He's going to eat some fucking chops. I bet you. Oh yeah. I bet you that's. Well, that's the thing, you guys. That's the thing about Johnny Knoxville. You can beat the shit out of him and not hurt him, because he's used to getting the shit fucked out of him. That's what I said. He's gonna get fucking raped. Someone's gonna fucking beat the brakes off of him. Yeah. That's the whole point. You guys, you remember? Um, you remember uh, the the time Umaga like fucking tried to concuss Stevo and. Um, Oh, oh, who was who was who was Steve O's partner on fucking uh uh Wild Boys? Fuck. Why can't I... Yeah, Chris Pontius. Because they didn't know how to sell. They right. couldn't they couldn't stop themselves from laughing. Have you ever seen this, Seb? No. Yeah, so uh once again promoting like Jackass or something, like one of their MTV shows, probably. Um uh there's a segment on Raw, uh Chris Pontius and Steve O from the Jackass crew. Uh, have a have a segment with Umaga, right? And um, uh, Umaga ends up like destroying them, giving them big splashes. The thing about it though is Steve O and Chris Pontius, they're fucking, you know, they're jackasses. They laugh <laughs> when they're hurt, right? Right. And they so they don't know how to be serious and sell and play dead. So Umaga, being the old school wrestler that he is, was like, well, it looks like I'm gonna have to fuck him up for real. And starts blasting them with legit fucking elbows on the ground to the point like one clan, like one lands so clear on Steve-O's head and the camera is lined up perfect. You just see Steve-O get clocked and then like a thousand yard stare go across his fucking eyes, man. It's it's brutal. I think Steve-O went on record to say, because he wasn't knocked unconscious like where he was sleeping, but he says like, I want to say he went on record and said like he remembered nothing after that match. Like, just oh. got the shit kicked out of him by Umaga. A fucking Fuck pissed up. off Samoan. God knows. Hell no, man. Hell no. Fucking play dead, boys. <laughs> play dead. Oh, last thing. Oh, man. Last thing. Well, let's talk about the last thing here. And I don't, we don't have to go that deep into it, but it, it's, it's something that popped up today. Uh, Kenny Omega. Uh, recently posted like that he was proud of fucking Riho for her match, and are they fucking? I, I don't know. I, that I didn't look into. All right, I don't know. I don't know everybody in pro wrestling that's fucking okay. He just always seems like he's like the only time he ever mentions is anything is when it has to do with Rio. Yeah, he mentioned something. He, I mean, he, you know, he complimented her online, and then the toxic side of Twitter just came for his fucking head because. Kenny Omega is one of the most hated p- fucking people I've noticed on this yep. app um, for no fucking reason. Like, I don't... Because Meltzer I, gave him five fucking stars a million times. Yeah, Meltz, he's Meltzer's favorite wrestler. That's that's his right. biggest fucking problem. Literally. Yeah. Well, people come for his head, and, and it's always the craziest. People saying a lot of slandering shit that I don't even feel comfortable repeating on air. Just... Some of the lowest of low, like, claims and accusations and shit. And um, and so Kenny Omega fired back. And one of the people he fired back on is is now creating, like, this stupid outrage. I don't know, man. Bama went on the record and attacked Kenny Omega because, of course, Bama would. Bama would take any chance he can to attack AEW because Bama <laughs> is a shill, you know. Um, no, but he said he said he... He he called a guy like he loosely just said like some dude, um, looks like he was abducting a child, and then uh and then fucking said you know the boys are gonna love you in prison something some stupid you know what I mean, um, what's y'all's take? That's, on the, this that's shit? the part I never get like these celebrities are just supposed to shut the fuck up and not respond back to these dickheads yeah. like why. Like, who are you to tell somebody they can't defend themselves at any degree when these literally are people fucking talking about their mothers, calling them fucking gays, all types of crazy shit, like constantly. And then when celebrities fight back, everybody's fucking outraged. Like, fuck off. 
Yeah. It's a double-edged sword. You, you're you a human being. You're allowed right. to, to, to feel a certain way after being maliciously attacked. I'm telling you, if I ever get famous, it's going to be a bad day for some motherfuckers. Like, I'm, I'm always going to have a controversy one because if you say one fucking thing about me, I'm coming at you, bro. <laughs> smoke, so I want all the smoke, bro. I'm oh, coming man. to every page you got. I'm going to your mama's Facebook page and talk shit about you, bro. Get the fuck out of here. But in the same light, though, you feed the trolls. You give them a reaction. You know what I mean? Like, Yes, that's the point of it. I love uh, it. Online trolls are like, uh, to me, they are kind of like the, uh, like they have like a similar effect that like, like the paparazzi have on celebrities. Mm-hmm. They, they will, it's, except the paparazzi gets paid, but they both fucking, they, they pick at you. They pick at you. They're in your business. They're, they're like in your face 24 seven, which is naturally agitating. And right. all they want is you to react because once you react. I get famous. I'm. I'm pulling the Jay and Silent Bob. I'm pulling up, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm pulling up. <laughs> Cross country. Let's go. What was that shit you was talking? Uh, Steiner fan 8981. What's, what was that shit you said? Uh, <laughs> pulling up. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. I don't know. It's, it's just, I hate to fucking see it. Because, like, Twitter is such a toxic place. But I love... Like there's like some bright sides to this app, and then there's other shit that goes down like this, and you're like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna dip out of this app for a day or two, you know. Oh my gosh, you know, fucking it's up there. <laughs> People, but I saw I saw a lot of claims like they need social media managers and they need this and that. It's like no man, just just fucking just people be cool, man. Just fucking be cool on online like don't be a toxic yeah. asshole to people and then you know you might not get toxic replies you know but who knows man he, who knows he represents a company who knows maybe maybe his shit maybe he's supposed to to fucking not have a a, a, a real life personality online right. or something <laughs> who knows i don't fucking know man they don't pay me enough to know That's our show, everyone. That's it. <laughs> That's it, man. That's it for the show. Thank you, guys. Hey, check us out on Patreon and, and uh, uh, PayPal. Patreon.com slash SmackDraw Podcast. PayPal.me um, slash SmackDraw Pod. You know, help support the show financially and everything. Um, we have a we have a bunch of rewards over on Patreon still. I'm still sitting on a surplus of goddamn stickers I bought a year ago. Um, I have a lot of dated SmackDraw stickers, by the way, too. Um Fuck yeah. Uh, before we go, hey, is there an update on that football game? Do we know who made it in the playoffs uh, yet? I think it's 20 to 14 Raiders. I'm about to say it's still going on. It ain't only going to like 11, 1130. Shit. All right, cool. I'll catch that. 20 to 14 Raiders. All right. Seb, you going to be back next Sunday? Should be. You should unless, be. You good for Sundays? Uh, once I get mandated to stay over at work, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, yeah, yeah dude. Awesome having you back. This is, this is great, man. It's fantastic. Um, but yeah, thank you guys, everyone watching the show. Tune in every Sunday. We do this live and like always y'all have a good one. See y'all next week.